Sounds good. So. Questions? Well, I have one crazy question. I just realized it this morning. I think you missed a number in sending out the notes. Either that or I've lost a set of notes. But I think you name you label these class 30, but I don't have a class 29. Did you send out a class 29 and I lost it somewhere? <laughs> I have I have I've been trying to figure out what happened. I somewhere along the way I have misnumbered the notes. Um, okay. And um, we we seem to be missing one, but I can't figure out. <laughs> I can't figure out where it is. Where it is? Okay, so it's yeah. Okay, it's not me. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> not you. <laughs> I started looking around physically, and then I was like, "Wait a minute!" And then I went back on the emails. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Nope. Um, All right. Well, I either. Either I just didn't send notes one week, or um, I, I quite frankly, I have to admit, I do not know quite what happened. That's fine. I mean, um, you, there's no, I, I haven't found a week you haven't sent them. I just like literally one week was the 28th, and then the next week was the 30th. Yeah, well, that from was what I can tell from mine. That yeah. was the week when I went back and went through my. Um, <clears throat> appointment books to check that we really had had as many classes wow. as I thought we did. And uh, we have, so we, somewhere along the way, I have, Okay. I don't know what happened with a week. Got something, okay. Yeah. So I, <clears throat> I apologize if there was a confusion there, but that's, okay. that's what happened. Briefly this morning, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Um, what's happening in your God's practice? What what's good? What's different? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I found trying to pull energy into the liver challenging. Mm. Um, uh huh. Um Although I think working on it um, helped me keep an awareness of keeping the elbows connected to the spine, mm -hmm. but I'm not not confident I kind of making that next step and pulling energy down into the liver. Um, and probably if you're having difficulty getting it into the liver, I presuming you're having even more difficulty getting it into the spleen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, um, it's like every time I, I work on it, it feels different. Mm -hmm. um, mm. And so I think maybe that's why there's a little bit of doubt, you know, it, it kind of feels like the energy is going into kind of different areas on the right side of the middle of your torso, but it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like there's like kind of a, a spot, um, like one spot where you're like, yeah, that's that's probably it. We're probably getting there. Well, of course, the liver's pretty big, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> right. So, I mean, that was my other thought. Like, you know, maybe you know, just stick with it. Maybe you know, you're on the right path, and in time, it'll kind of solidify, and you're just maybe just like getting certain parts of it, or not others, or you know, whatever. Yeah, I think you know. Um, well, we're going to spend today working on movement three. So, um, <laughs> we'll be, in a way, we'll be addressing uh, some of the things related to that. Mm. Um, it yeah, it does. It does simply grow from practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it it 
it's not that you have you know <laughs> that one day you start in and it's oh i've got it and it's there mm, from yeah. then on um I wish. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> nice, but yeah. um, uh, uh, the the connection to specific organs um, certainly didn't work that way for me. Um, it just uh, developed over considerable period of time of practice, mm -hmm. and to the point where I reached eventually reached a point where. I felt confident that I was getting into specific organs when I chose, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it, it, it was not quick. So, okay. Um, I think it's important in doing that to really think of breathing into that area mm. because there is, mm -hmm. That's part of the intent, and it and um, if you breathe, it's interesting for me anyway. If you breathe into your liver, or any organ, but into your liver, it expands. It mm. opens up, um, and and it is a, a very physical, concrete feeling. Mm. So I found that that really making sure that I had a clear intent to breathe into that organ that I wanted to reach uh, was a real help. Okay. So, Joanne? Yeah, no, that's all helpful. Um, yeah, I think um, I have been, yeah, I have been feeling the, um, the kind of structural, you know, my elbows, my spine, I think that that has been uh, that I'm developing much more of, of an awareness of that. And then also, therefore, not needing to be aware of that, <laughs> which yeah. is kind of nice, you know, kind of trying to, mm -hmm. trying to get to that point. Um, and also, um, yeah, thinking about kind of the, the organs in a separate way as opposed to, oh, that mush in there as we bend over. Um, so, <laughs> I like it. I'm not, I, know, I wasn't even thinking of the spleen. That didn't even kind of cross my mind, really. <laughs> but, but yes, the liver. Um, so I do feel that there are, yeah, I feel like to be able to get to that point of even being aware of that, that other things are falling into place. It's still that, you know, process of just kind of getting something in it, you know, um, or practicing something enough that one doesn't need to keep thinking about it and then not losing track of it as you keep adding more awareness to the next thing that we're yeah. supposed to be doing. But yeah. I feel like there, this was an overwhelming week. So I, I don't feel like I practiced as much as I had really wanted to. Um, yeah. But, um, but, you know, but every week I, I need to do enough to, yeah, keep being aware and keep, yeah, developing, so. Don't think I had other particular okay. questions. I got one question about the hand position in one. Mm -hmm. uh, once you come to the top, come to the top, um, as you come in, this angle here, mm -hmm. um, should you try and keep your hands like facing forward as you come down and in? I find mm. I have more flexibility in my left wrist than my right wrist mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And it just kind of pinches here or should you, should you just let them like turn to a, a position that's easier? So as, you come up and and the hands go out and and then as you begin remember your elbows are dropping and uh -huh. as they come up your your arms are twisting outward and then as you come down they're twisting inward and you're bending so your fingers are bending your wrist is bending your elbows bending everything's bending so you're twisting in as you come down and okay. it, in one that's a the the twisting is very small because of the position of the arms you don't have that 
big twisting that you have in two, for instance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Is, is that? Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Because I think as I was coming back, I was really just focusing on um, bending the joints more, and that's how I just ended up leaving the hands on the side channels, but really wasn't focused on trying to to twist the whole the whole arm. And I can just feel you know focusing on that instead of bending. It it gets your wrist in a better position. Yeah, you you can let go of the of the um, bend of the wrist as you're coming in. Okay. Coming down, excuse me. Yeah. And in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So, what is the purpose of movement three? <laughs> <laughs> That might be a good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is to open the left and right channels of energy in your body that go basically from your shoulders nest down to your qua points. And I might just add, <laughs> of course, for you that it is also traveling through your arms and legs and the side of your head. Um, it's, it's, um, strong, it's also to strongly integrate your legs with your torso. And this is a rather big deal because most people's legs do not integrate with their torso, especially at the level of chi movement. It can, um, It can strongly compress and release the internal organs from all angles. And this is the way that you create the internal space with your body through which your fluids can flow. To make all the fluids of the body fully activate and penetrate everything in the body to the maximum extent. In everybody's body, whether they exercise or not, you get places where blood, energy, and fluids pool. They don't circulate evenly throughout the body. They circulate through a lot of the body evenly, but then hit a place where it gets stuck or it just pools, which the Chinese call stagnation. And God's is very, very good at releasing these stagnant areas in the body so that your internal organs get fed with all the energy and blood that they need. Movement three activates all the places of movement. It does it vertically, horizontally, and coronally. Where movements one and two primarily work on the vertical plane, basically up and down, the up and down of your body, not side to side, not coronal circles. So you've mm -hmm. seen, seen me before, but I'm going to demonstrate movement three just to have a, a hopefully a clear demonstration of it. And I'm not going to do a lot of spine bend in this because that's not our focus today. Um, so let me just... Did not mean to go away. <laughs> there you are.
Mm. So not that I think there are any particular surprises in, in that, but just to try to be clear about that. So the basic things that we're going to be going for in movement three, uh, so you kind of have a sense of where we're, where we're going and what, what we're going to ask you to try to do, is first of all, you're going to circle your torso, as you know, in a circle, 12, 3, 6, 9, 12, and we do it in reverse. And when you do this in a smooth motion, it's called a coronal circle, coronal like the corona around the sun. The next thing is that you have to con connect your head, spine, perineum, and feet into one unseparated and connected whole. It's going to be as if there is one line through them. The next thing is that you're going to be stretching your quad. You're going to stretch it to go out and you're going to stretch or bend it inward to bend forward. Next, you're going to physically compress and release your joints. And the actual purpose is to affect your abdominal cavity. You <clears throat> will determine how high and how low you should go. And we'll talk about the 70% rule <clears throat> and as you know, in Qigong, you never do anything to 100%. Hmm. So, for instance, if I go clear out, this is 100%. Obviously, if I try to bend, extend my arm any further, I, I could break it. That's all I could do. So 70% is in a bit. And this is 100% in, we don't go 100% in, we only go 70. And so everything is working within that 70 to 70% 70 range. So um, I'd like you to stand if you can. I have a quick question, David. Oh, I have a question. Okay. Um, I, I think that um, at, um, particularly at 12 and six, I have been putting my hands much more together facing each other. And you were, it, it, I was just really noticed how much more open your hands were. So could you say a little about that? So how far you twist um, in there is really, that's really up to you. Okay. Um, what, what feels what your, what your tissues actually will do. Um, and, and from that point where, where you go out, um, if you only get to here, that's fine. That's, that's um, perfectly all right. I, I feel the twist further. So okay. I go further with it, but it, at the important, um, and we're not going to be really focusing on the twisting today, but uh, I will say that when you think about the twisting, the real <laughs> trick is that it never stops moving. Uh -huh. yeah. That's, and that's kind of a, di the, a difficult part in this movement because it's very easy between three and nine to twist as far as you can go and get stuck. Mm -hmm. So you have to, as far as that twisting is concerned, um, you really have to, to make sure that you slow it down so that it can be continuous. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. All right. So we're just going to be working on movement three. And 
we're not going to be really flowing with it here at first, but kind of taking things step by step. So first, just stand for a moment. Let yourself really settle and connect. Be aware of your breathing. And be very aware of your body. You want to really endeavor to connect your head to your spine and your feet. So that you have a sense of something that is going from your head right through your perineum down to your feet. Your head's lifted a little so that you can open that very clear connection to your spine. Don't let it lean in any direction. As you go through the movements of movement three, you want to make sure that you never have a sense of the head disconnecting from the spine. And now without actually using the arms at the moment, we're gonna go through this, the circle. And so at 12, you're facing forward. And then you turn and begin to rotate and sink towards three o'clock. And you're actually bending from the qua. So go to the three o'clock position and don't go too low. And pause. Try to be relaxed and easy. Then circle on down to six o'clock. Again, facing forward. And pause. And here at six o'clock, for a moment, sink as far as you can, finding your 100%. And then come back up to your 70% so that you determine where you want to be at six. Then continue your turn and go to nine and pause. And then continue on up to 12, which actually is one of the more difficult parts of the circle because you have to keep your legs connected to your spine so you don't disconnect or have a sense of falling. And then you come back to 12, facing forward. Now really focus on, the, on your four points. Rotate to three, keeping those four points straight so that your left and right channels are in straight lines. Don't move your head or shoulders separately. Go circle on down to six. Keep that circle. And going on to nine. 
And the trick is to keep your back foot completely on the floor. And then you have to stretch your quad to get you back up to 12. And so the next thing is that you have to make it very clear that the center of your head is going through your perineum. And you want to feel it going through your legs into your feet, pressing into the ground. <clears throat> so that as you make your circle, the circle is pressing your feet into the ground. And through that is extending through your legs up to your head. So flow now through your circle. Go twice in the first direction, three, six, nine, twelve, and then twice back in the other direction. Trying to really feel that connection through the body. Make sure you're only going to 70%. When you finish that, let's take a little break, sit down for a minute. So what did you feel in that? If anything. Uh. <clears throat> I felt it, it is really easy to get the shoulders and quad separated. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, it is. Um, it, for me, I found more success um, keeping the four points together by kind of focusing on the on the middle of the four points. You know, so hmm. kind of like like the middle of the torso, right, kind of diaphragm level. Um, for whatever reason, that seemed to help keep it synced up. Uh huh. Good. Yeah, that's it is that is really important, and it is so easy to to over <laughs> rotate uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and twist uh, yourself out of alignment because mm -hmm. that really interrupts the flow of the yeah. energy. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, a couple of things. Um, one is just trying to really be aware of the 70% more than I think I have been. I mean, I, I, I realize that it's, <laughs> it's foundational, but I think I've not been thinking about it quite as much. And to some degree, especially because of my knee, I can't really stand it 100% anyway, uh, or a stretch, but trying to, particularly at, at 12, kind of feeling it more in my, uh, in my knees and in my qua, I think. Um, and I was aware more of my qua. I've been really feeling the four points. So that wasn't as, that, that, that kind of felt, yeah, that, that felt like I was doing it correctly, but yep. I, I'm more aware of, of the role my qua is playing, I think, in terms of, um, uh, yeah, in, in terms of all of it. Yeah, that, well, it is important because it, it takes the pressure, helps to take the pressure out of the knees. That's right. That, that was very clear. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So kind of that. And then where is the 70%? Yeah. Kind of yeah. Um, is, um, yeah, just a heightened awareness of that. Yep. That's good. So <clears throat> the intent of your mind to go through your body, the free flowing of your nervous system, as it connects everything in you, is going to require that if you're going to connect your internal organs to what 
to do what they can. You have to have your arms extending out. They can't be limp because they need to be like a bungee cord pulling on something. And what they're pulling on is your internal organs. So if you're going to charge internal change, David, change internal compression with your abdominal, within your abdominal cavity, your arms have to extend out. But then it's going to be a question of how far. And that's where you're going to, again, run into the 70% rule. Now, whereas in some of the movements in God's, it's more of a matter of how much your hands are connecting, uh, are coming out of your spine, here it's going to be more a matter of how much your hands are pulling your internal organs and putting the bungee cord effect on your internal organs. And that's kind of an um, important point because Obviously, in our form, in, in our Wu style, our connection is to the spine. And in most of the, the movements in gods, it's to the spine. But here in movement three, it is specifically focused in connecting to the internal organs. So let's stand again. <clears throat> So one of the things to be really clear about is that the, um, the arms need to be on the left and right channels, at least the hands and the elbows when they can be. So do one repetition of movement two and then go into movement three. As you get to the top, just kind of pause for a moment. So the arms come up and they are in somewhat of an ellipse. And the center of your hands is going to be right opposite the shoulder's nest. If they're higher than the shoulder's nest or lower than the shoulder's nest, that's not where we want them to be. And they are going to stay at shoulders nest height all the time. So they don't move up and down. Your body moves up and down. So do a movement, do one of movement two again, and then go into three. and pause at the top of the movement. So just pause for a moment. So at this point, this is where you have to connect the elbows. So you want to actually, and we've talked a lot about this, you want to just let the elbows pull out a little bit, but that pull is a relaxation. It's not a stretch. So that your armpits open a little bit and you get the sense, the feeling of something pulling on the inside of your abdomen. And you wanna keep that pressure when you find it steady through the entire flow of movement three. So the distance that the arms are extended is not an exact distance. <laughs> it, it really is a distance where you feel that you have that rubber band right into your internal organs. So now, 
can begin to go into your circle. And try to keep that connection to the organs as you go. Try to feel that connection right into your abdominal cavity. You want to feel it at every point of your circle. Don't let your arms drop or go limp. Remember, they are at the height of your shoulder's nest all the time. The pressure has to be steady. Next time you come to 12, reverse direction. Make sure, sure, make sure your elbows are extended so that you have a little bit of pressure on your organs. And you may also feel it on your heart. Keep that pressure. Keep it constant. Because you need to understand what that pressure is. And then next time you come to 12, reverse again. The pressure doesn't have to be heavy. It just has to be constant. always that constant forward motion or pressure to keep the internal organs getting worked. Next time you come to 12, just relax. And you can sit down. So were you able to get some sense of connection to your internal organs? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, yeah. so. Um, mm -hmm. definitely, it definitely wasn't constant or consistent. It definitely came and went and had to kind of keep keep playing with the elbows, keep kind of resetting and trying to find that spot. Yep. Um, yeah, I was very aware at first when you were when you were talking about it. I, like with Adam, it came and went as I as I moved. <laughs> um, so yeah, 
that's something to, to work on. I, I do have a question. I think I'm, I'm confused about something. Sure. Um, which is uh, keeping your hands. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I felt like, but my hands are, yeah, my hands are moving all over the place here. So, um, say more about that. <laughs> I, mean, I can say all the things I think it may be wrong. So why, why do that? That's not helpful. Um, <laughs> um, so I was just yeah. very aware of that, trying to, to, to put it all together and have my hands coronal, but yeah. Yep. No, um, I, I, I do um, really understand what you're saying because <laughs> we, we want to do more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the thing is that when you get up to here, you get your hands at the yeah. out opposite your shoulder's nest, Yep. They're going to stay there all the way through. The, if I don't do, you know, the arm rotation, I just do the body rotation. This is what's happening. Okay. The, the yep. hands are staying in this position. The elbows are continuously moving. Yeah. Mm. Because of the rotation, which is is your connection through yep. the elbows into the internal organs. Right, which means I'm not bending enough. I beg your pardon? I am not bending enough. Mm -hmm. Well, that could be. Because in order to, yeah, in order to do a coronal circle, then I feel like I'm moving my hands down towards my quad, uh -huh. as opposed to moving my spine, as opposed to bending my spine. Yeah, so there's, you're not, um, you, you're not gonna be a better person by, by making it look like a bigger circle. It doesn't <laughs> need to be a bigger circle. It simply needs to be a clearly a, a circle. circle. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, that's absolutely right. And the, the um, not thinking so much about the spine bend, but the, but the bend um, at this point is not a lot. It's, it's the uh -huh. angle of your rear leg. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. You're, you're not going, you know, you're not trying to go out here, which is gonna take you out of balance. And we're continuously trying to not over rotate because right. that immediately is a negative as, as we know. <clears throat> I know you don't understand that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But our tendency is to try to go too far and then all of a sudden we've broken the four points. So it's fine. If your circle is smaller, but clear, <laughs> That's fine. We're not, we're not. Um... Yeah, what I find challenging with, with making the rotation yeah. smaller on the sides is then trying to get that to balance with the up and down. So you, mm -hmm. so you get a circle instead of kind of a, yep. a big oval or ellipsis. And, yeah. Uh, and, um, and don't get overly concerned about the shape of your circle too. If it's a little <laughs> okay. oval, okay. okay. As okay. long as it's That's round. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The, 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 the point about it is not <laughs> so much that it is a perfect circle, mm. but that it doesn't have any straight lines or corners. Right. 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 It, okay. It's very yeah. easy to make like a diamond shape. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A circle. You know? Boom, boom, boom. Um, yeah. So what yeah. you said earlier about making sure that the, like the weight of your head is dropping through your pelvis um, and your perineum into your feet has been really helping me, you know, kind of adjust and see, you know, where, where are you? Are you 
able to get that curve without um, kind of overdoing anything. So yeah, that was helpful. Mm -hmm. And oh. I think the other thing that I didn't, uh, I, I mentioned at one point just briefly, and that is making sure that that connection of your rear foot when you're at three and nine is very positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which means that you haven't over shifted your uh -huh. weight. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right, you're not leaning out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're, you are you are bending out, but you're not <laughs> overdoing it. Yeah, a lot of times I find myself um, correcting because I, I lean out and I have like a uh, hundred percent of the weight like jammed up in like past the ball of the foot into the toes. Uh, you feel the toes of that weighted foot like pushing back, so you don't fall forward. Yep. Yeah, you got to be uh, try to be really clear about that. It's it. Um, it's the same thing that we're you know we work with in the form. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that in the form we are usually vertical. We're not most of the time leaning in any direction. Mm -hmm. um, I think the the um, I think the connection of the elbow to the spine and the organs, and actually, you're you're always really connecting to both, but your intent changes. Um, it's not always the same, clearly. Mm -hmm. So in movement three, it's definitely the organs. Mm -hmm. In movement two, it's the spine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it do that doesn't mean that when you focus your intent on the spine that you're not also connecting to the organs. <laughs> so right. the, what all I'm saying really is that the, that finding that constant connection, internal connection of the elbow is really important. Mm -hmm. It really struck me um, when you were talking about um, the placement of the elbow and the connection um, to the stomach, because then suddenly I could feel it. Just it just kind of like big, you know, like I just uh -huh. hit the right spot. <laughs> it was kind of like, oh yeah, okay, um, yeah. So doing that obviously means yeah. That I, I didn't keep it, but I know where it is. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so then, yeah, uh, yeah. So that's the next thing is to keep it. But but being able to feel it so clearly was. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Yep. Good. So, right now, this is about um, connecting your arms to your internal organs. Um, we will, in future classes, uh, deal with the arms rotating, which is what is going to make. Mm -hmm things go into your internal organs and come out of your internal organs, which is going to be about squeezing the spaces and pumping them so that you get a free fluid flow inside everything in your abdominal cavity. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'd like you to, to, to see if you can do that practice one more time and um, do, do one of movement two to get you into it and then um, do six in each direction just to give yourself time to, to really um, feel that.
Try to make it very steady and even. And try to find that bungee cord effect on your internal organs. And if you recognize that you've lost it somewhere, See if the next time you go around your circle, you can keep it present. Your spine is connected through your perineum down to your feet. Remember that the Lao Gong point in your hands is opposite your shoulders nests, not sinking. The body is doing the circle, not the arms. Try to keep the pressure regular on your organs. Let your bending and extending come from the qua. And let your nervous system be as smooth as it can be. So you don't have any sense of start or stop. No intermittent movement. Good. So that was kind of interesting because I could see, even on Zoom, I could see you improve as you went along. <laughs> yeah, I felt like it got better as I went. Yeah, definitely. Um, Joanne, you um, got your hand, your arms and hands to stop moving yes. independently. Yeah. Yes, I, I worked on that. <laughs> Good. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I, I think the other thing I'm aware of, um, I've been trying to work on is not um, shooting the arm out and then shooting it back, right? I think that's where the yeah. form, you know, the work in the form has been helpful on that. So I, I need to, I mean, I'm aware of it and yeah, put, put, again, it's putting it all together, right? There's some new, yep. there's some kind of nuances of that that I think we're learning today that I need to, yeah, yeah. really work on this week. You know, it's uh, that movement at three and six is opening. It's not pushing out. Right, right. And so um, you're, you're quite right about that. Um, <laughs> it was interesting. At this point, Bruce suggested that you should practice this 20 minutes a day. <laughs> if you really wanted to <laughs> progress with it <laughs> and at least five days a week. <laughs> yeah. So I'll throw that out. Okay, that's a good goal anyway. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, the biggest single thing to keep in mind is that there are two things that are happening if nothing else. One is that you are relaxing your body and your mind as much as you can. Mm -hmm. And second, um, you are extending your body. You're trying not to have your body internally collapse. Mm -hmm. So these are the two biggest things that we're working on at the moment. So there's a little bit about movement three. Other questions right. there? Oh, that's good. No. So, and I think I have questions for myself, but I think the tape answers all. You know, it's just a matter of going back over it. I, I don't have any other yeah. questions. So the, one of the things I think that this uh, also points out for us in, in our form is that how we have to do the same thing with the elbows in the form. Yeah. We're talking about here is just that we are, our intent is focused on the spine rather than the organs in the form. Mm -hmm. Although <laughs> it's possible to, to change that intent because certain postures do affect certain organs in the form. Mm -hmm. That's another, that's another world. <laughs> but it does exist. But at the moment, our focus in the form is to, to connect with the spine. And it is so easy in all of the movements that we do, particularly um, in some ways, because we don't make a lot of movement to lose that elbow connection. On the other hand, because we don't have a lot of big arm movements, it seems like it ought to be easier. <laughs> Not mm -hmm. necessarily mm -hmm. the case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think it's something that, that is a really good focus because we begin through our, our practice with gods to recognize how effective that is. Mm. So, um, we could do a little bit of the form and, and think about that. See what, see what happens with mm -hmm. focusing on that aspect. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think I've just put enough pressure on my right knee that I'm going to have to sit through this. I, okay. I did well. I did well, but. Yeah, did. I was, <laughs> I, I did was, you know, well. <laughs> I was but I also noticed I, I need to be practicing this more probably because my uh, yeah my ankles are a bit swollen and so I've got to stop that pulling as we say as you say. Ah <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm a, yeah I don't want to push it and then I won't be able to do my twenty minutes a day this week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Always thinking ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got to do that when your body is not always working right. <laughs> so, 
I think one of the things to be aware of in regard to the elbows in, in the form is that when it happens is in that very first connection when you rotate right and the arms begin to lift. And at that point, they, that's where you have to establish that connection so that it can continue to be present through every movement beyond that. It never collapses. Mm -hmm. It never gets lost. It's always making that connection to the spine. Even though we do all kinds of things, not letting either elbow <coughs> collapse, but continue to be pulling and connecting. Mm -hmm. I think it's it can be a really interesting practice to really focus on mm -hmm. the elbows. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I find the, the elbows feel like they're more connected if um when you focus on the shoulders, almost instead of the scapula, you focus on kind of the top of the shoulder. I don't know why that is. Um, if you can just kind of feel the scapula move there more. Um, hmm. I think in the past, I've always kind of focused like on the lower part of the scapula. I don't know if that's the right track. Your <laughs> fate says no. <laughs> 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 well, my, my, my concern is if you get too focused on the AC joint, yeah. um, that you, you actually, you, you may not lose your connection to the scapula, but maybe you decrease it by virtue of not focusing on the scapula. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, the AC joint is part of what's opening and closing, no question. Mm. Um, but, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, <laughs> the other, the other side of that is, yes, it's good to be aware that, that the acromioclavicular joint is moving. That's that's important that it is, that it isn't stopping everything by virtue of not, not opening and closing. Hmm. But you really want to feel it go through, you really want to feel it go through the scapula to the spine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So perhaps easier said than done, but. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Always. All, the scapula is interesting because I think we all have very different relationships with it. <laughs> you know, like I mean, seriously, I oh, you know, no. in class we have to tell people where it is. You know, <laughs> yeah, where we yeah. always know where our shoulders are, right? Uh, I mean, I have a strong awareness of my scapula. Why I don't know, but I always have. So um, that does, yeah, yeah. Well, that's I've good. Other people kind of go, and I don't understand how to move it. You know. Yeah, um, I'm not, not saying you, Adam. I'm saying some of the other folks in class have kind of been like, "How do you do that?" So, um, but at the same time, when you ask that question, Adam, when I yeah move my scapula, everything does move. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. You are, we are right. aware of that, right? Yeah. You can't. A lot, a lot of times, I think I, I focus on moving the scapula, and I leave all the other stuff behind. You know, so it's like this: the scapula is kind of sliding around underneath everything else and uh, almost like you're really just focusing on the muscles towards the spine to kind of pull the scapula yeah, in towards mm -hmm. the spine um and then kind of like uh, collapse to pull it out and like that's it without you know kind of the rest of everything else yeah being involved right um, yeah yeah um, and that's it and that's a really good awareness adam i i completely agree with you because um, it's, it is particularly important that the, the um, armpit gate and the shoulders nest gate um, and the AC gate all open and close along with the scapula. Mm -hmm. So it's not, wow. it's not just the scapula. Um, and the, one of the uh, interesting things is that the armpit gate also strongly connects to the internal organs. Mm. So um, the, it's part of, of that whole process. Mm. Right. So, yeah, you're that's a that's really good question and a good really good point i think you really have to to be aware of opening all those gates not mm. just not just one of them mm. cool <laughs> oh good something to play with yeah <laughs> something to play with yeah something else <laughs> to add to your <laughs> right not that we uh don't have anything to practice. Yeah. Well, because we do it the one time and we've learned the lesson and we can move on. <laughs> it's done. But I get it. <laughs> well, well okay. any other questions or thoughts at the moment? No, I don't think so, David. No. No, that was great. Yeah, good class. Good class. Good. Well, I hope you um, have fun. <laughs> we will, I'm sure. <laughs> Find that 20 minutes a day. <laughs> yeah. I'm going for it. I'm going for it this week. Thank right. you. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Take care. All right. Take care, Thank guys. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.